We're going to talk today about the art and science of attracting nothing but A-list clients. And that only involves three things. What is positioning? What is digital media? And how you can use digital media positioning to attract A-list clients. Seems simple. We should be able to go through that in an hour, don't you think? Well, as we go along here, you may feel differently. We're going to be really rocking and rolling through a lot of information. And as I say, I respect your time and I want to get this done in an hour. I also appreciate those of you who've brought uh, writing devices and laptops and so forth to take notes. Uh, I would suggest that maybe you just use those to write questions down that you want to ask. Because after the presentation, I am recording this presentation. And I will be sharing it with everybody who attended today as an audio recording. I'll also be matching it with the slide deck to create a video presentation. And I'll be presenting you with the slide deck as well. So, um, so, yeah, you can just sit back and relax and, you know, enjoy the brain candy. All right? So, as I say, you know, it's digital media positioning, but we're going to kind of take this in reverse order. First, we're going to talk about what positioning is. Then we're going to talk about what digital media is. Then we'll talk about how you put those two things together to attract those A-list clients. But before we get going, I want to ask you a question. Can anyone tell me what this is? You're too much of a concrete thinker, Steve. This is your comfort zone. You know what the rest of this is out here? This is where the great stuff happens. Okay? So I'm going to talk about a number of things today and I can tell you that there's going to be a little voice in your ear that's going, I can't do that, I can't do that. Now this is Frank can do that, I can't do that. And I want you to forget all about that. Forget about it. Okay? So if you will, just take a little flight of whimsy with me here for about 60 minutes. Is everybody willing to do that? Sure. All right, great. So what is positioning? Well, here is a very wordy statement. Positioning is an effort to influence the buyer's perception of one brand relative to another in order to occupy a clear, unique, and advantageous position in the buyer's eyes, buyer's mind. So what does that mean? That means Pepsi wants to be in a different place in your mind than Coke. Ford wants to be in a different place in your mind than Kia. Google wants to be in a different place of your mind than Apple. That's all it means, how they're positioned. Now, what is it that's being positioned is their brand, and we could spend all day talking just about branding. But basically, it means what you think Google means. When somebody says Google, when somebody says Apple, when somebody says Ford. Let me give you an example of positioning. These are all sedans. They all have four wheels. They all have four doors. But they're all very different in terms of how they're positioned. So the Nissan is down under $20,000. The Ford Taurus between 25 and 45, let's say. And the Mercedes is at the top end. Of course, there are sedans that are much, we could have this line just keep going across over here. But the point is that each one of these is positioned in a specific spot. And in fact, car dealer, every one of these manufacturers has cars that are like this and cars that are like this. And they position each one of those automobiles at a specific target market. Right? So there's no necessarily correct or single target market that's right, except for the one that's right for you. Okay, and so we're going to talk about who your A-list clients are. The question is, of all of these, which one is best positioned? Which one sells the most? It's not based on the pricing or the functions or the features. It's who's selling the most. Now, what is your current status in the marketplace of your A-list clients? We're going to talk here in a little while about specifically what your A-list clients might be, but let me just say that for any product, any service, Anywhere in the country or anywhere in the world, there are basically three groups of service providers from the perspective of the client. There's somebody they don't know. And I would say out of about 20 people, this is about 15 of them. Okay, maybe 17 and a half. They've, there's all kinds of providers out there that could help them that they've never heard of. Example I really like, Steve, is from the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book, Gary Keller, he talked about in almost every neighborhood, there's one or two agents that own that neighborhood. And in every one of your neighborhoods, you know who that is. They're the ones that you always see their signs. And one of the recommendations that Gary Keller makes in his book is don't try to knock off number one, but get yourself up to number two. That person's vulnerable. All right. Now, 
And what I'm talking about here, how many real estate agents do you think there are that could buy or sell your house? Those are the ones that are over here. Okay. Now, there's another group of people out of 20, I'd say it's about four of them. Are well, you not really sure? Yeah, I kind of heard of that guy. I think I saw a sign once, maybe a bumper sticker. But I can't remember if his name is Tom or Bob or if he's a real estate or a plumber. I'm not really sure. Okay, but I do. There is a little bit of flickering of consciousness relative to this guy. But I'm not really sure who he is. Now, this is 19 out of 20 people. Friends, do we want to be these people? No, of course we don't. We want to be this guy. This is the guy that you immediately think of who's the one who can solve your problem, whatever it is. When you think of whatever's bothering you, you want to buy or sell your home, you want to buy a car, whatever it is, there's somebody who comes to mind, and this is because this person has done an excellent job positioning themselves as a solution provider to you. It's important that you realize that you have a brand, whether you know it or not, and whether you're specifically and proactively working to build it. If I say the words Abraham Lincoln to you, certain images come to mind. Pipes hat, what do I call it? Stovepipe hat. Long beard, gaunt appearance, honest Abe, you know, born in a log cabin. This is all part of his branding, whether he tried to make it part of it or not. Very similar story exists around all of us. The point I'm making is that you need to take charge of that story. I'm not saying you need to make it up. You already have a great story, but you need to make sure that it's being expressed correctly to the right people, people, group of people, consistently ongoing. Dan Kennedy is a marketing guru, and he says, his belief is that if you aren't deliberately, systematically, and methodically establishing yourself as a subject matter expert, you're asleep at the wheel, ignoring what is fueling the entire economy around you. And if you think about all the things I'm going to talk about today, the internet, social media, video, audio, all this jazz, that's the economy around you. Okay, now before we go forward, I want to ask if anybody has any questions about what I'm talking about, about positioning. Yes, ma'am. I don't think it's immediately a question, but like you said, like you want those clients and people to know who to call or when to call, so like a clear choice. For us, like people don't know that we exist until they need our therapy. Mm -hmm. And so then they start to search. Mm -hmm. and the research and everything. But Great. It's not like, oh, I want to buy or sell a house, I'll find a real, real estate agent. And it's, it's, oh, I don't know, I, my child needs therapy. For so what do they do when they have the problem pop up? Well, a doctor tells them to seek our therapies, and they normally get a prescription. And then they start doing research. Okay. So this is, can they only purchase your uh, services through their doctor's prescription? No, no, they can pay out of pocket if they want to. But okay. What I was driving at is, at some point, they're going to start doing some internet research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You want to be the one that they find. And we'll talk about how you can do that here. Okay. Anybody else have any questions about positioning? All right. I'm glad you brought that up because it's an excellent case study. Now, I can't tell you who your target market is because there's just too many people here to talk about it. So what I want to do is use my client targets, my A-list, as an example. And then you can think about who you would be substituting or what attributes you'd substitute. My A-list clients are business owners, doctors, lawyers, professionals like architects, CPAs, wealth management people, this type of thing, and coaches and consultants who want to differentiate themselves from the competition. I often say it are a BNI uh, meeting said, I elevate your personal brand high above the noise of your competition to create a steady stream of A-list clients prepared to pay premium pricing for the privilege of doing business with you because you're the one who wrote the book. So that's who I'm looking for, and these are the people sort of demographically that I look at. Psychographically, these are people who we often say have more money than time. And so they generally make decisions very quickly, and they will base their decisions on references, third-party credibility, and validation, and this type of thing. I like them because they're willing to pay a premium, premium price for a premium product. I'd like everyone to say that five times fast, please. And generally speaking, successful people are easier to deal with than unsuccessful people. It's not always direct correlation, but generally speaking, it has been my experience. 
They're also excellent sources of referrals for me. So I'm clear about who I'm targeting. Okay? Everybody's with me on that. Now, they choose the way, back in the day, this is probably too old of an expression for many people in the room, not Steve Kahn, though, because he's really old, is uh, you know what <laughs> the, uh, they used to say, nobody ever got fired hiring IBM. And that was because even though IBM charged the highest price, they always took care of the problem. So the boss might carp about the cost, but he's not going to fire you because it got screwed up. Hire IBM, that's what these people would prefer to do. They'd look, in effect, for proven solution providers, subject matter experts. That's what that SME. Choosing a, a, a subject matter expert equals a low-risk purchase decision for these people. Now, how do I become that subject matter expert, you might ask? Well, the first thing is you don't say, I'm an expert. Okay, there used to be the uh, advice that was given about 10 or 15 years ago, but the uh, marketplace has gotten a little too sophisticated for that, and as soon as they hear that, they tune out and tune on. Instead, you don what I call the mantle of the generous educator and sincere advocate for the success of your target market. And you freely answer their questions and solve their problems across every medium, online, video, in person, print, publicity, online courses, audio books, podcasts, whatever. So that everywhere they look, I'm sorry, what's your first name? Yeah. Everywhere they look, and they find you. Okay, and you, you place your content in a way that it matches the questions that they ask. So you could get extremely specific and, and vertically focused with certain um, diagnoses that the doctors might use that somebody who has never had that problem has never heard that string of words put together before. But somebody who does will see it immediately and they'll come to you. So what happens then is people start finding your information. They see your videos. They hear your audios. They read your books. They see you interviewed. They come to your presentations. And then when a friend of theirs says, I've got a problem trying to find a provider for my child was just diagnosed with autism. They go, oh, I just saw Ann's video yesterday on YouTube, and you know she's the one you need to call, and I know the phone number was at the end, so I'll send you the link. Okay? So then other people say, Ann's the expert. Okay? Now, something I, wanna, I don't have in here, but I want to stop and, and say about it. A lot of people don't feel comfortable. You said it yourself when he said you were the franchise guru. You said, like, oh, I, I, I I, I'm not guru, I'm not guru. What's that? I, see, you said, you said I listened. I even listened when I shouldn't be listening. We all have a problem with that. Now, I'm not a religious person, but I can tell you twice in the Bible, Jesus, or not Jesus quoted, but it said, and yeah, I guess it was him saying, a prophet is not without honor except in his own home. There's a lot of different interpretations of that, but basically, people are afraid they're going to go to Thanksgiving dinner and the, their brother in law across the tables go, what are you, a hot shot? you got to write a book. Who, who died and made you king? A lot of us have a problem with that. I say you need to let go of that. You have a lot of information and skills and experience that you can share with people that could be life-changing. And, and, you know, I'm going to tell you about a presentation I did at, uh, further on in here, and I'll tell you, I stood in front of about a 1,000 people, and I was shaking in my boots because I knew there were a lot of people in that room that knew more about this topic than I did. As it turned out, it was all, my fear was for not, as I'll explain in a minute. Yeah, the fear of something is always worse than the something itself. So here are some examples of people who have successfully used positioning that you may have heard of. So Dave Ramsey was in the real estate business. He was a very successful 25, 26-year-old real estate investor. And all at once, the federal laws on lending changed. And he got a little stretched out. Got some of his loans called. He couldn't cover it. Went right down the tubes, became bankrupt. He made it his life's mission to learn everything there was to know about an individual getting themselves out of debt. That's an extremely targeted vertical. Individuals, not companies, not governments, individuals getting out of debt, period. He became the expert. I mean, we could talk forever about Dave Ramsey. He's on over 500 radio stations every week, multimillionaire. Barbara Corcoran is now on Shark Tank. That's where most of you are familiar with her. But she started out in real estate in Manhattan, and residential real estate on the island of Manhattan was her vertical. It's her laser-focused target. She created a silly little mimeographed newsletter called the Corkman Report, cited six sales. She had 11 agents. They made six sales in the previous uh, six months. 
And she took it and averaged out what the average sale was, and she put this report together that said, the average cost of a piece of Manhattan real estate is this. And she printed it up and folded it up herself and put it in envelopes and licked and stamped and mailed it to every reporter she knew, and one of them picked it up, ran on the front page of the uh, real estate section of the New York Times, and the rest is history. Gary Vaynerchuk came into his family's $3 million wine business. He changed the name of the company, and he started doing a daily YouTube video called Wine Library TV. He took it from $3 million to $60 million. Sold the company. He's now like a, a you know guru on digital marketing. But there are also other people for whom this works, like business owners, doctors, lawyers, etc. So let me give you a couple of you know people you may have heard of. This is when uh, Steve and I first met up somewhere around. The, actually, it was before this picture was taken. So I was telling you, I was standing in front of a room of 1,000 people, and I was giving a speech called The Foreseeable Future of the Printing Industry. The printing industry was going through this terrible technical upheaval at the time, and I was, uh, had gotten myself a column in the biggest trade magazine in the industry talking about digital technology. Nobody else was doing it, and all the printers wanted to hide from it. And I just started a newsletter called Digital Printing Trends. I spoke for 90 minutes. At the end of the presentation, I said, I'm having a special today on my newsletter, $197. Uh, for a 12-month subscription, you can sign up the back of the room. I didn't have anybody waiting at the back of the room to sign up. It was just me. And I could have, I don't know how much more I could have sold, but people waiting in line gave up and went on to lunch. So let me I'll talk to you about this in a minute. But think about how many people in this room do you think knew who I was or had ever heard of me before this? So they went right from never heard of him to here's my check. Martin Signs. At uh, Mr. William Davies' suggestion, came to me and said he wanted to write a book called Note Investing Made Easier. And we have done that, and Martin has put on two workshops where he charges people two, th as a result of having written the book, where he charges people $2,000 a ticket to come to workshop. And I just saw on Facebook this morning, God bless him, he's got three more workshops scheduled between now and the end of the year. Uh, I think it's Philadelphia, or New Jersey, Washington, D.C., and Miami, Florida. Conrad Bosmans is a friend of mine. One interview on a podcast episode landed him an $18,000 consulting gig. This type of thing works. Now, it doesn't always work just like that. Sometimes, you know, you've got to work up to it. How many people here know Gus Christofi? Okay, he has a HVAC business here nearby. He recently told me that the publication of his book is, uh, had a tremendous impact on his business, and the number one reason why is because people don't question his pricing anymore. And I said, oh, does that mean you can charge premium prices? He goes, no. They don't question the price I give them. And I used to lose, like if I was the first or second person to give a bid and the third guy came in and offered it for $50 less, they'd go with him. But now they don't because I'm the guy who wrote the book. Now, in the HVAC business, every deal is worth 6 to 12 the last meeting we were at, he said, thank you for a $30,000 order that was referred to him. Connie Fuchsa, uh, you may know Connie. She's foot title in Southern Maryland. Uh, anyway, she does a, a series of videos uh, called Coffee with Connie that she does on YouTube. I'm working with a guy right now, Dr. Aryan Malavi. He's a board-certified plastic surgeon in Laguna Beach, California. And uh, we're producing a series of recordings called the High Definition Liposuction Podcast. The point I'm making here is you don't have to be Dave Ramsey or Barbara Corcoran or Gary Vaynerchuk for this to work for you. So I just went back here. We were talking about uh, how it works or, or people it works for. Do you have any question about whether this is something that only works for certain people or any, any objection that this could never work in your industry? Any questions? Okay. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of marketing theory here. One of the things that I've done to help establish my credibility is I published a series of online courses, and I'm happy to tell you that I have almost 16,000 students in 163 countries around the world who have subscribed to my courses, which is great, of course, for my following and my authority. And one of those courses is called How to Build a Customer Factory. So I'm going to show you here what I call the marketing assembly line. We, go, we start with a stranger, somebody who's never heard of us. Remember, we had the guy with the box over his face? But these are targeted strangers. If we're doing good marketing, there's not just any strangers. There's somebody who meets our prime client profile, our A-lister. We start working on them. Little by little, they go from stranger to suspect to prospect 
and I'll, and I'll explain those more. Customer is a first-time, one-time buyer, and a client is an ongoing purchaser or source of repeat and referral business. Now, what we normally do is we begin to work on them. If we saw this as an assembly line, you could think of these as the robot arms coming down out of the ceiling and applying different processes and tools to this prospect as they go down the marketing assembly line. Could be radio ad, could be a billboard, could be a business card, could be an in-person meeting. It's all these different things. But in our case, it's content that we've been generating, this helpful content, the videos, the audios, the books, the text. And we move them from stranger to suspect, where a stranger they never heard of us, suspect they've heard of us, but they're suspicious. And that's because we're all suspicious anytime a marketing message breaks through our consciousness. We're inundated with hundreds of them on a daily basis, and we know we can't trust them, they only want to sell us something. And then we get them to the point where a prospect is ready, thinking that you might be a good solution for their problem, and then somehow when we get them from here to here, they make that first purchase. Now, one way you could look at this and sort of marketing the, uh, theology is that from stranger to prospect is marketing's job. This is where they're seeing ads on television, they're reading in the newspaper, they're whatever. But once they get to the point that they're ready to buy, you're gonna have to close them. Once they're thinking that you could be a good provider for them, you're gonna have to close the deal. So my point is that digital media positioning can help you all along this process. It could take somebody from never heard of you to, you know what, this guy might be the one I want to buy from. Or if they already went from here to here through some other process, it might get them across the finish line. For example, let's say I came into a sales call and I said, uh, yeah, Mr. Davey, I appreciate you coming to see me today. Before we get started, I don't have a business card. I just have this book that I've autographed for you personally and I want to leave it with you. Uh, whichever way you decide to go based on today's sales presentation, please hold on to this as my gift. Now, how can I help you? Okay, you see how that could help you get it across the finish line? The, the point is that digital media positioning can actually get you all the way from here to here. And that's what happened at presentation I made in Florida. Now, they may have seen my column in the magazine, may have heard of me somewhere through the industry, but I'd be willing to bet the vast majority of the people who gave me $197 that day had never seen me before. But the fact that I was on the stage and I was introduced as the expert, and then they heard what I had to say, and this is an important point. I didn't stand up there for 90 minutes and try to BS them. I gave them actual, actionable information that solved their problems and answered their questions. But the thing is, it used to be a very difficult thing to do. Now, in Washington, D.C., there were two daily newspapers, basically. Back in my day, it was the Post and the Star. Now there's the Post and the Times. All right, so how, you know, how are you going to get in there? Kind of tough. Magazines, they only come out on a monthly basis, and then there's at least a month's additional lead time and production time. How are you going to get in there? It's going to be tough. Radio and television, forget about it. Forget about it. How are you going to get on radio and television? It's really tough. Takes a lot of budget, takes a lot of time. Better have a great story to tell. Better have a great publicist. It's really hard to break through the consciousness. And publishing houses, you're gonna get a book published? You know, ha! That's not gonna happen. Maybe you pay thirty or fifty thousand dollars to a vanity press, they'll do it for you. And PR firms, you know, five thousand dollar a month minimum retainer. Today, things are different. You are in charge of all of this. There are no gatekeepers. Well, they are, but there are many, many fewer of them. You publish instantaneously and it's available permanently. So just because you were featured in the New York Times, one day, if they didn't see it, it didn't happen. Now it's there forever. And one of the most important things to think about is that you can target exactly who you want to speak to. Now, Barbara Corcoran was on the real estate page. That was pretty good targeting. I'm sure there are a lot of people who read the real estate page who really weren't buying and selling real estate. They was kind of interested a little bit. But today, you can speak to exactly who you want to speak to. Now, I like to use this a lot. There are a couple people here who met my ex-wife. I like to say that with Facebook advertising, I could force my ex-wife to look at a picture of me every day in her newsfeed. You know, of course, until she said, this is what is an objectionable content. All right. But that's how targeted you can get with advertising. And it's not that expensive. I mean, I could make her miserable for pennies a day. <laughs> so you still tracking with me here? Not going too fast? All right. Now we're going to talk about what digital media is. 
We talked about what positioning is and why it's great. And now we're going to talk about digital media. And we're going to wrap up with how to use digital media positioning to attract A-list clients. Basically, digital media is content. There's a lot of talk about content marketing. I give presentations about content marketing, but I don't want to go into that right now. I, I prefer to talk about it as digital media. And basically, it's free or paid answers to problems, answers to questions, solutions to problems. I recommend that you give as much of your information away free as possible. And in fact, how, when should you decide how good it should be before you start charging? Well, almost never. In fact, you should, people should react. This, this information is so good, they should charge for it. Because you want to be that go-to person, the one who knows everything. Give you another example. We often see, ever, ever been to a movie and you go, man, all the best jokes were in the trailer. You know, when I saw the preview for the movie, they had all the best crashes, all the best shootings, all the best jokes. Well, that's not an accident. They give you all their best stuff to get you to come in and buy. You should take the same approach. One point I want to make here is it goes beyond digital to print and live events like what I'm doing right this minute. I include this in digital media because I'm digitizing this content right now. And I'm going to be repurposing it. And I'm going to be giving it freely to all of you here and to a lot of other people. And just so you know, I'm going to be turning today's presentation into a book. And it's going to be my book. A lot of people said to me, you know, Frank, you tell me I should have a book for my business. Well, where's your book for your business, Frank? Well, here it is right here. I'm writing it right this minute. So... We all understand what digital media is, or at least my definition. It's video. Now, video takes a lot of forms. When I say online accessible recordings, I mean YouTube. But there's a lot of other places where you can record video and post it up where people can get to it. On your own website, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, virtually anywhere. It doesn't just have to be YouTube. Also, presentations like I'm doing right now, like Danielle's company is, can be broadcast live. It can be, uh, in effect, a webinar. People can watch it remotely. Or you can do it from a desktop remotely. You can do desktop communications one-to-one. -one. How many people here have ever done a video call? FaceTime, okay, right. Now, how many of us feel like we do a really good job at it? Well, we could probably do a lot better and then record it, repurpose it. Same questions that that person asked you on the phone, other people have the same questions on their mind. The answers you gave today can be made available 24 hours a day if you would only take these steps. I'm big on content. I do a lot of podcasts. I'm the voice of the HD LiPo network. Come on. I uh, also was fortunate enough to be on live radio for 83 episodes, and I've been doing podcasting for a long, long time. What I recommend, creating a podcast is a real big task. I recommend you consider becoming a guest because you can be on multiple podcasts all around the world and reach tens of thousands of really targeted listeners who are interested in exactly what it is that you have to say. And you're going to be right inside their head, right in their earbuds, or in their car with them while they're driving, in their earbuds while they're bicycling or exercising or whatever else they're doing. And you don't, all you got to do is you know, get on the phone or get on a Skype call. Social media, you can repurpose. I'm going to be talking about repurposing here in a minute. Everything I'm talking about, how many people here feel as though they'd love to be able to post on social media every day, but there's no way it's ever going to happen? Anybody feel like that? Okay. Well, the presentation I'm making here today could turn into two months worth of social media postings by having it recorded, transcribed, edited, chunked down, repurposed, scheduled. That's it. I also, I refer to email marketing as social media. And I, except for talking to you about what I've got on uh, 16,000 students, I'm not even going to break into online courses. But you talk about a way that you could become the go-to expert, produce online one or more online courses about what it is that you do. That would be fantastic for you. Okay, good. Now, <laughs> I told Steve something here. Steve doesn't know that uh, I published Steve's book, I'll let you touch this for a couple of minutes, but I'm taking it back before you go. I had Steve's book produced in hardcover without his knowledge. And uh, how many copies of those do you think I had to buy in order to get that, that sample right there? 
Uno. They're just about. $27 plus shipping. Back in my day, you would have to buy a thousand books, maybe three thousand books to get it down to a unit cost that made any sense. And what happened was people would have them piled up in their garage or up in their attic. Moths love these kinds of things. So do uh, roaches. They really like paper products. And, um, but now you can have it produced on demand, uh, paperback, hardcover. Obviously, Kindle is not, uh, there's no duplication cost. And I convert these things to all these different formats, including audiobook. And in terms of PR content, back in the day when it was magazines and radio and television and newspapers, we didn't have the 24-hour news cycle. Now we do. They're always looking for additional content. And the probability of your story being picked up is greatly enhanced today than it was back in the day. But it's not going to be picked up if you don't publish it. Now, I include opportunities like this, as I mentioned, because you can capture it and digitize it and repurpose it. And I have a lot of different ways that you should be making use of this. I'll, I'll talk to you about it right here. But before I go forward, I just talked about all these things. So you can do this, and you can do that, and you can do the other thing. And you all feel like you can do it right now, right? Maybe not. I'm not so sure. I don't speak YouTube. Okay, and I don't blame you. All right? But let me tell you, this is all you need to do this. Okay, everything you need is in that phone. It's an audio recorder. There's a video recorder. There's an Internet connection. There's whatever, whatever you need. And I'm going to show you here at the end what I suggest is a very simple first step for you to take. But I want you to believe, remember, get back out of your comfort zone and realize it's not that you can't do it, it's that you won't do it. You won't make the steps required in order to learn it or process it. And if I haven't persuaded you by the end of this hour that it's something you should do, then you won't do it. But I hope that you'll come away seeing the power and the value of this process and say, hey, you know, maybe I should put some energy into that. Okay, so we talked about positioning. We talked about digital media. Everybody feeling pretty good about all that? All right, now we're going to talk about how you position yourself with digital media. This is something called the authority wheel. Again, I'm getting into a little bit of theory here, but I think it's important for you to understand sort of what's going on behind the curtain. In the center of this is your message. This is critical. It's not in the middle by accident. All right, remember Barbara Corcoran, Manhattan residential real estate. Gary Vaynerchuk, wine. Uh, Dave Ramsey, getting yourself out of debt. High definition liposuction is all very targeted. It's critical, and I'll talk about this in a second, how you create that message. But from that message comes all this digital media, okay? It's at the center, and this stuff is generated from it. Here's your message in three easy steps. Who do you help? What problem do you solve? What's the secret sauce? I help professionals and business owners attract an endless stream of A-list clients clamoring to do business with them at premium prices because they're the one who wrote the book. All right, that's my, that's my elevator speech. You need to be able to explain that in a lot of different at a lot of different levels of detail. For example, you need to be able to answer those three questions in 30 seconds for your elevator speech. You also should be prepared to explain to a room full of people across 18 minutes at a TED Talk what it is that you do, what's great about it, who you help, what problem you solve, and what's, better, what's secret about what you do. And you should be prepared to do a presentation like this. What I would say is that you start with this. As part of my radio career, I wrote and produced, a lot, I don't know how many, radio commercials and trying to state the problem, present the solution, and call to action in 30 seconds is a trick. And it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of discipline and I recommend it to you. Because what it forces you to do is to get down to the real essence of what it is that you do. Why should anybody care? And if you can't tell me, there's a problem. There was, I went to a meeting, I won't mention who led the meeting, but uh, the lady had asked me to come to see if I could help her launch her new business. So I said, okay, you know, 
who do you help, what problem do you solve, and what's your secret sauce? And after two hours, I didn't even know the answer to one of those questions. It was clear to me she didn't have a business, but it, all it did was frustrate and anger her. I didn't appreciate, you know, neither one of us was having a lot of fun at that point. Now, it's important, as we talked about, to get focused. So, Martin Science, he wasn't just talking about real estate, and he wasn't just talking about real estate investing, he was talking about investing in distressed mortgage notes. And Steve Kahn wasn't just talking about investing, he was talking about investing in stocks, but not just stocks, but microcap stocks. And Dr. Ari Malavi is a doctor who is doing elective procedures of liposuction, but not just liposuction, but high-definition liposuction. And I won't tell you why it's great, but it's great for a certain tight target of people, and certainly plenty of people enough to keep Dr. Malavi's practice hopping for the rest of his life. The more targeted you get with your message, the more responsive will be your target market. Don't be afraid to get extremely specific. Now, we come back to Steve Kahn, and I, I should have called you to tell you to come over here. So here's, here's another way that I think, if you, if you don't feel comfortable trying to write your message in 30 seconds, try this. Try writing the back cover of your book. Every non, uh, non-fiction how-to book, the most important page in the whole book is the back cover, and on the cover, back cover it says, in this book you will learn. You don't need to get you know, crazy about what the, what the uh, title's gonna be just yet. Just as a quick suggestion though, when you're writing a book title, when you're writing the title, get creative. When you're writing the subtitle, get descriptive. Title, what does that mean? It means this. Um, for example, I'm turning this into a book titled Digital Media Positioning. What does that mean? The Art and Science of Attracting Nothing But A-List Clients. There it is. All right. So here you'll find on the back cover of every how-to nonfiction book about six to ten bullet points that said this, 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 and this. What this is, it's called the big promise. This is the transformational experience, the beneficial thing that's going to happen to the reader if they take the time to buy and read this book. It's the same way you should look at it in terms of anybody who's reading or engaging or consuming any of your content, or doing business with you for that matter. Why should they? What's the transformation? What's the big promise of your business? So, how do you get started? You start with, let's say, the back of the book here. All right, you've written your eight bullet points. Get out your phone, put on your earbuds, turn on the voice memo thing and start talking. Go ahead, I dare you and start reading the bullet points, and then just start explaining. Well, to me, this means this, blah, 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 blah. and then listen to it. And you're like, oh, that wasn't so bad. Oh, that sucked, but oh, that wasn't so bad. And you improve as you do it. That's, you know, I love to say we all learn best by our mistakes, and that's how I became an expert. So you've got to go out there and do it. Get interviewed or interview someone else. How many people here have ever heard of Napoleon Hill? Okay, Napoleon Hill wrote a little book called Think and Grow Rich. Well, how did he do that? He went out and interviewed all of the most successful people of the day. And what did it do for him? Made him look like an expert. You can do the same thing. It's done all the time. And then what you do, I can't tell you how much I learned from interviewing people on my podcast. Unbelievable how much I learned. Um, But you just got to find something and start reading it and recording it. Now... How many people here love the way their voice sounds when they hear it on recording? Okay. And how many people like the way they look on camera when they see themselves on video or photograph? Get over it. All right, here's the funny thing. The way you sound on the recording is the way everybody else thinks you sound. And the way you look in that video, that's the way everybody else sees you. Okay, every day of your life. It's certainly embarrassing and uncomfortable, but you just got to get over it if you want to do what I'm talking about here. So get over to your voice, get over your face, and go out there and prove your message. <laughs> Is your face hurt? That's killing me. All right. Um, this looks a little busy, but the point is that Martin Science wrote a book. He, he, in the por- process of doing that, we shot 11 videos. And from the 11 videos, we created 11 audios. And we created 11 chapters in his book. He now has a video library of 11 videos, an audio library of 11 audios. He's taken this same information and repurposed it into a two-day workshop for which he charges $2,000. The process I just described is content repurposing. I have an online course that's 10 hours long. I'm turning, it's called, you know, How to Build a Customer Factory. I'm turning it into a book. It's going to be a big, thick book. 
It's also something I could do as a two-day workshop. It's all, all of these things. I, I have a client, every week we send out a, uh, an email to about 4,000 people on their list. After that, it's turned into a tweet, it's turned into a Facebook post, it's turned into a blog post, it's turned into a LinkedIn Pulse article, every week. The main thing, you only need to create and capture the information once, but then to get the most value out of it, you have to repurpose it. So we come back to the authority wheel. In, this is it in theory, this is it in practice. Okay, we record an interview, either I interview somebody else or they interview me or whatever happens, or it could be live like this and I'm recording this, or it could be a, an online course that I'm, I'm repurposing. And it turns into all these things. Now we could also take this video and put it in the middle and repurpose it every single way. Okay, there's just so much flexibility here that sometimes people find it a little overwhelming. Here's an example I want to show you. <clears throat> so this book is called Unlocking the M Cube. I wrote this book in 10 minutes at our BNI meeting. And I specifically created a slide deck to do this. And I got up and I started and I powered through. And it was not a very conventional keynote presentation because I was really more worried about this than I was about the people in the room. So I converted it into a book. It became a best-selling Kindle book. I then converted it into a paperback book. And it's an interesting thing. I'll pass this around if you would pass it around. It's a little tiny five by eight book. It's very short. <clears throat> you can read it from cover to cover in 30 minutes. Now, you would think that that would be a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. We have very short attention spans today. When I tell people, I gave a copy of it to you, right? Okay. And I, I probably said something to you along the lines of, you can read this book from cover to cover in 30 minutes, and I'm confident it's going to transform the way that you look at your own business. So that's what I tell people. It makes them more likely to read it. Now, whether it actually has that effect or not, I don't know. But it's important to understand that the book doesn't have to be long to be effective and to have the impact of positioning you as, a, uh, as an authority. I spoke to another publisher, and I said, well, how long does a book need to be? I was interviewing him on my podcast, and he says, just long enough. So now, we've talked about positioning. We've talked about digital media. We've talked about using digital media to position yourself as the authority. Is everybody with me so far? We're just about out of time. We're racing to the finish. So now we're going to talk about attracting A-list clients. So this portion of the presentation assumes that you've done everything we've talked about. You have a very clear, laser-focused message. You're very clear about who your target market is in terms of your A-list clients. And you have published your free help here, there, or somewhere. You don't have to have it all out there yet. I had a client recently who, uh, Jeremiah Davies, a uh, guy came across one of his videos on YouTube, turned around and featured his company as best of the best, and produced this unbelievable video about what an incredible company has and everything. And it all came because he found this video that we had produced. So he still has a whole process of book and everything else that's still in process. But don't wait, just like you say, until it's all perfect to get it out there. There's four different ways that you can attract these A-list clients, or places, I guess. Online, speaking opportunities, networking meetings, and sales presentations. Now, this is something called the voice-activated marketing system. I'm not going to go all the way through it. But uh, as I say, you will get this slide deck, so you can read this later. But this is the most direct and understandable process I've ever seen to move somebody down the, the digital funnel to buy your product using authority positioning. I, as I say, it's you create the content, you publish it where your customers are likely to find it, you promote it in three different ways, and you create sales funnels to, uh, to pull it down into your database, into your sales funnel. I, you know, everybody wants to know how they can get more speaking opportunities. And I would say the number one thing is to have an exceedingly clear message. There are some bookers, speaking bookers, and uh, show producers who won't like your message. That's good, because you don't want to present to them anyway, and you don't want to try to work, convince somebody that they like your idea. Uh, it's an old expression from radio. You want people to either turn up the volume or change the channel. So if you're really clear about what it is that you're going to talk about, and then you talk, you target speaking opportunities that are likely to resonate with that, you'll have a better chance. Then, when you're there, give it all up. Just like I said about the 
movie trailer. Don't hold anything back. Give people all of your best information and give it to them for free. That's you becoming that trusted, uh, generous educator and sincere advocate for the success. But while you're doing it, also capture everybody's contact information. And then from that point forward, you would do, as I say, you will drip on them until they either buy, die, or opt out. Now, this is a guy I saw present. If you have any concern about repurposing information and thinking, oh, no, I don't want to have the exact same information in the video that's in the book, that's in the this, that, 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 forget it. This guy stood up in front of this group of printers, and he said, before I get started, he was going to give a two-hour presentation to a 1,000 people. Uh, I want to let you know I'm not being paid to present today. Your trade association paid for first-class airfare and a real nice hotel room that I had last night and a great steak dinner as well. But other than that, I'm going to be walking out of here with nothing unless you guys buy some of my stuff in the back of the room at the end of the presentation. So I'd like to make a deal with you, he says. He says, I'm going to give you all kinds of great information for free, and all I ask for in exchange is three commercial messages, of which this is one. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah, great. Let me get started. Gives you just unbelievable, just fire hose level of information about negotiating skills. Then he stops in the middle. I don't have time to tell you the whole thing. But I'll tell you at the end, uh, I was one of, I don't know how many people, I, I remember I estimated it was $24,000 the guy took out of the room, um, who paid $297 for his package of information. Well, it turned out the hardcover book had the same information in it that I just heard in the presentation. And the video series had the same, it was the same speech I just watched, but it was videotaped. And the audio package was the speech, but it had been audio taped. And the workbook was this. It was all the same information repurposed 12 different ways. But I'll tell you, to this day, I am a much better negotiator than I was before I saw Roger Dawson that day. You don't learn things the first time they happen. Exactly. And a lot of us, even if all you did was buy the book, if you didn't read the book, they don't get anything. You know, most people don't. They buy the book and they never read it. So I watched the videos. I did the workbook. I listened to the audio. I, I bet to this day. Now, I went and looked him up and I got this image. He now has it niched down for ne negotiating power for salespeople, negotiating power for uh, real estate, negotiating your next raise. There's all these different books niched down. A lot of people do it the other way. They'll start with negotiating power for real estate and then they'll ladder up to wider and wider groups. So, for example, in my case, I have digital media positioning. Uh, the Art and Science of Attracting Nothing But A-List Clients. And I'm going to have a book that's called Digital Media Positioning for Attorneys and Digital Media Positioning for Medical Professionals, etc. And that'll be niching down. Now, quickly, here's how you can use this at networking meetings. Mr. Davey here is an expert on referral marketing. Number one thing I would say is go into the meeting with a clear objective of what you're trying to accomplish. Know who your A-list prospects are. When you see them, zero in on them. And don't think about talking more than one. If you can talk to two of them afterwards successfully, God bless you, because people leave. If you see somebody who really looks great, go to them. Walk up to them, hi, Joe, I'm really interested in what you said about architecture. I didn't know that there was a firm like yours here in this area. Tell me a little bit more about what you did. He hopefully has some kind of good canned elevator speech. Based on the smart questions you ask, you say, here I am, this is what I do for architects who are looking to solve these problems. Then you follow up later with a thank you email, a thank you card, and you send them some of your free content. I'll show you great examples of that here in a moment. I just talked about coming into a sales presentation using your book as your calling card. Extremely powerful. Same deal, follow up with thank you and send them some more free content featuring you and all of your expertise. And then put them on your ongoing weekly email drips, because just because somebody's not ready to buy today doesn't mean they're never going to be ready to buy from you. This is great. This guy, Mike Koenigs, happened to see that Richard Dreyfus was on his plane. So when he was getting on the plane, he sees Richard Dreyfus in first class. He gets on his phone. He looks up Richard Dreyfus. He finds out that Richard Dreyfus has some sort of a foundation that he's going for, and he's having a hard time raising money for it. Koenigs gets out. He always carries multiple copies of his own book, writes inside the cover, Mr. Dreyfus, I have an idea for you about how you can raise money for your foundation. It's on page 43, it's something you can use right now. He hands it to the guy. Before they, he even got out of the airport, uh, Dreyfus called him on the cell phone. They sat down, had lunch together, and now they're doing business together. Another way you can do this, if you're having a hard time getting through to a VIP prospect, 
This is an Amazon gift wrap. Okay, you can send this. This is guaranteed to break down the gatekeeper. You send this gift wrap, back, gift wrap book. You also have a little message in here. You can create a personalized video for that person if they'll take the time to go there. But any way you look at it, you broke through to their consciousness. Your book is in here. It's not autographed because it comes straight from Amazon. That's how it gets through the gatekeepers because it's packaged from Amazon. But in any event, you will definitely have touched the consciousness of that person, and it costs you $4.95 more than you would have paid just to buy a copy of your book. The bottom line, though, is you've got to have a direct correlated solution to their problem. Everybody with me so far? Ready to get started? All right, we've got four minutes. So the first thing, the cheery thing is, I can't do it. I can't do this. Not for me. I can't do it. I can't do it. Well, I want you to think about getting outside of your comfort zone. You want to be that guy? I don't think so. All right? You want to be moving forward with your business. Remember that you really, in addition to hurting yourself, you're withholding your energy and your love and your knowledge and your wisdom from the world. Everything that you know about how to solve people's problems is locked in your heart and brain. And I can't get it out of you unless I can get right in front of you. There's only so many people who can get right in front of you. And there's a whole world of people who could benefit from what you know. You could have been a contender, but no. So just start with this. We talked about how important it is to define your message with three questions. Who you help, what problem you solve, what's great about you. Identify who your A-listers are. Spend some real time with that. Get, get specific. Then build your authority wheel, your message in the middle, and what the different ways you would express or manifest your message through audio, video, text, and the other things that I talk about. You can do this. Just record a 10-minute audio. Write the back cover of your book and sit down and record it. Then have it transcribed. There's a place called Rev.com. They'll transcribe it by a human for a dollar a minute. Another place called Trent that'll transcribe it by a computer for 15 cents a minute, 25 cents a minute. Then have it edited. Edit it yourself. It's only 10 minutes worth of content. And then send out the audio, post it online, send it to people, put it in your email signature blog the content that you've written, and create a PDF white paper and make it available as something that you could forward to somebody after a networking meeting, after a sales call, what have you. Be prepared to send any one of these things to somebody after you've had their interaction. And anybody who's interested, as I say, I will send you the audio recording, video recording. I'll also give you an autographed copy of the book, Unlocking the m Cube. All I need is to get your contact information and that you were here today, and I will share that with you. Grant Cardone is kind of a, if you have, kind of a hard case. I've, I've, <laughs> I usually read books as audio books, and he's a hard guy to listen to because go like this every second. <laughs> he's a very intense guy. But he would say that it's, not, it's your duty, obligation, and responsibility to be as successful in business as you could possibly be. The way I look at it is, if we figure that the more people you help, the more successful you will be, then it's your duty, your obligation, and your responsibility to help as many people as you can. And I've just shown you how you can do it, and the tools and technology and channels are available to all of you at virtually no charge. So I want to leave you with this thought from Seth Godin. He wrote, he's written many books, but so this one's called Tribes. I love the subtitle, which is, we need you to lead us. We need some help here. So lead us. Remember, life's too short. You don't want to end up on the, on the porch in the rocking chair or down on the ground thinking, gee, I wish I would have published that online course, but I just didn't do it. Do something you believe in, and you will leave a legacy behind you that will last forever.